Hello everyone, this is Ali Reza from DrHSolutions.com uh, In this video, I'm going to explain how to use oscilloscope uh, for simulating and measuring AC circuits in multi-sim. Uh, the basic circuit that I'm using here is a, a RC. It's an RC a circuit. We are using a resistor R1 in series with a capacitor and we are using a uh, an AC waveform which is a 10 volt RMS root mean square uh, and the frequency is 1 kilohertz. Uh, you can bring an oscilloscope from the uh, right side menu in Multisim. Um, if you go here this is I think it is the fourth one uh, from the top and if you click on that one then, then you will be able to bring the uh, oscilloscope as I, I do it right here this is oscilloscope, okay? So this is the oscilloscope that we are using. Uh, the oscilloscope has two channels uh, that we can use both channels at the same time in order to measure a voltage. Uh, uh, there are uh, positive and negative inputs uh, of both channels, A and B. We usually use the positive uh, as the input signal. So I connect it to the uh, input voltage and for B, the positive input is connected to measure the voltage across the uh, capacitor, uh, C1. Uh, the negative inputs should be connected to the ground, as you can see here, and I'm connecting it here uh, to the ground for both channels. Uh, so then we will be able to see the waveforms. Uh, if we run the simulation and double click on the oscilloscope, then uh, the oscilloscope uh, screen will pop up and you will be able to see the waveforms. But there are a couple of uh, things uh, to explain on the uh, oscilloscope screen uh, that are very important uh, and basic things to operate the oscilloscope. The first thing is that we have two channels, as you can hear. You can see here channel A and channel B, uh, and this is the time base. Time base is as actually the time, uh, which is the horizontal axis on the oscilloscope, and the channel A and channel B scales, as you can see here, are the amplitudes uh, and the vertical axis on the screen uh, for the oscilloscope. Okay, there, as you can see, for each channel, we have three options, as in a real oscilloscope. We have DC, we have zero, we have AC. So for any of these, if we connect the channels to zero, then the input of the, wave, uh, the oscilloscope will be connected to ground, so no waveforms will be displayed. If you put it on DC, both AC and DC of the waveform uh, will, be, will be displayed on the oscilloscope. It means that uh, if you say that you have a, a signal that has a DC component and AC component, uh, and you want to see both of them, uh, you will put the oscilloscope in DC mode, so you will be able to see AC part and DC part of the waveform. If you want to cancel the DC part and you want to see only the AC part of the waveform as you want to see the ripple of a circuit and a power supply, you need to put the oscilloscope in AC mode so it will block the DC component of the signal and you will only measure the AC voltage. So in order to see uh, both AC and DC, it is better to use uh, DC and then you will be able to see uh, both components of the signal. Uh, okay, so uh, for the vertical, we have two channels, as I said, channel A and channel B, and uh, that you can adjust the gain uh, of the measurements or the scale, uh, which shows uh, the, the value of each uh, section on the oscilloscope on the vert vertical and horizontal uh, axes. Uh, for, for the scale that you can see here, uh, which is the scale for channel A, is actually the scale for the vertical axis. So you can increase that one. So every division uh, will be 10 volt, as you can see here, or 20 volt or 50 volt, or you can decrease it and it will be like 1 volt or 500 millivolt per division. Uh, so the signal will be amplified and then you will be able to measure that one. Uh, in order to see just one waveform, so I uh, I use just channel A, as you can see here, so I put the channel B to zero, so no waveform will be displayed. And usually when we 
uh, want to display a waveform using an oscilloscope, we need to show a couple of cycles on the screen. So this waveform that you can see here is not usually appropriate in order to put in on your report. So this is not good uh, waveform and you need to have a couple of cycles. And also the amplitude of the waveform should be large. Uh, so the largest display that you can show on the oscilloscope screen uh, is usually the one that we accept and is a good waveform. Uh, so for this one, as you can see, the frequency is so high and the waveform is compressed, so we cannot see the waveforms correctly. So we have to go to the time base, as you can see here on the left bottom side uh, on the oscilloscope panel. So we have the scale and we need to change that one uh, in order to see a couple of waveforms. If you increase uh, the time per division or time base, it will be more compressed. And if you uh, increase that one, as you can see, so we will be able to see a couple of cycles. This one is a good one for measurement. Uh, we can add a couple more if you want to see the uh, whole waveform. So this is the one that we are using. So this is the only one that uh, we are uh, using as a channel one. So it's a sine waveform, sinusoidal waveform. And there are also cursors here that we can use in order to do measurement. Uh, as I explained before, uh, for channel A, uh, every division on the vertical axis is 10 volts here, right? So uh, we have, uh, like if you measure from the bottom side to the top side, it is uh, almost uh, three uh, vertical divisions and three vertical divisions times 10 volts, it will be about 30 volts, peak to peak, right? So there's a peak of the signal, which is the, uh, the top value and the bottom peak, right? Which is the negative peak of the signal. So we will be able to measure the top, but uh, you know, the amplitude. So this is the peak to peak value of the signal. If you wanna measure more accurately, you can use these cursors as you can see here. So you can move it on the top, there are two of them. So we can see here, we can measure from the uh, very top, peak positive value and bottom value. And the values are, ex are displayed here, as you can see here. So it is almost, uh, the, the blue one is showing negative 14, and the yellow one is showing 13.96, very close to 14, right? 14, positive 14 and negative 14. So it's almost 28 volts. And the difference is displayed here at the bottom, like 27.966, uh, which is about 28 volts. Okay, so the peak to peak value is 28 volts. And if you want to uh, measure the uh, RMS value of the signal, uh, you need to divide it by a square root of two. So if you do that one, like say 28 volts and then divide by uh, square root of two, which is 1.4 almost, the value will be uh, 20. Uh, Okay, so this is the peak-to-peak -peak value, right? Uh, so for uh, RMS value, this is actually divided by two, which is two, which is 10 volts, right? Okay, so because if you remember the formula uh, we were using uh, for, uh, for relating the peak value to the RMS value, the RMS value is the peak value, not the peak-to-peak -peak value, right? So the peak value divided by the square root of two will give you the RMS value. So the peak value of this signal is 14 volts, right? Uh, so I was using the uh, peak to peak value. So the, the peak value is about 14 volt. And if you divide it by the square root of two, which is 1.4, it will give you the 10. And as you can see, the source of the signal has a 10 volts RMS, but the peak value is about 14 volts. Okay, so this is how to measure the peak to peak value and you're you are reading the value also at the bottom. And the, the other thing that we need to measure from a waveform is measuring the frequency of the signal. For the frequency of the signal, again, we can use these cursors and we can move them. Uh, we can measure uh, from two peaks on the horizontal axis uh, or you can measure from two zero crossings, right? So for the two peaks that we have here, and as I'm moving the cursors, uh, we need to consider the, uh, the time, which is the horizontal axis, and every division on the horizontal axis has 
500 microseconds. So, uh, and the difference, uh, so we can, we can just measure how many divisions on the horizontal we have uh, for the distance between these two cursors, which is, I think it's about uh, two, as you can see here. So it will be like uh, two times 500 microsecond, which is about a thousand microsecond or one millisecond. Uh, so the period of the signal, which is the time difference between the two peaks, uh, will be one millisecond and the frequency will be one over that value, which is, will be one over one millisecond, which is a, a one kilohertz uh, uh, voltage. Okay, uh, so Another thing that we need to uh, do measurement here is uh, the other waveform, right? So if we have two waveforms, like the output waveform, uh, we can use the other uh, channel too. So instead of connected into zero, I connect it to the DC. And uh, as you can see here, so uh, the waveform will be displayed. The second waveform is the waveform uh, across the capacitor. And uh, so what we can do, if we want to move cursors on the second waveform, just double click on that one. Uh, so it will go uh, on the second waveform. Okay, again, you can measure the amplitude of that one. We can measure the peak value or we can measure the peak to peak value. It's possible to do that. Uh, for example, here from top to bottom one, uh, we are measuring the, and this is displayed like four volts, right? The peak value is four volts and the uh, peak to peak value actually, right? This is for channel B, right? For channel B, it's uh, 4.3 uh, volts almost, the peak to peak value. So the peak value is the one that is shown for one of them. It's like 2.16. And again, we can use the uh, calculator in order to measure the, to the value of the RMS value. So 2.16 divided by square root of 2, which is almost 1.4, and it will give us 1.5. So 1.5 volt is the voltage across the capacitor. Uh, we measured the frequencies, the same thing in a linear circuit. Uh, you can measure the frequency, like here, from two peaks, like two consecutive peaks of the signal. You will be able to measure the time, which is again 1,000 microsecond or one, micro, 1 millisecond, which is the frequency and is for the waveform that we have here. So we are, we are actually seeing the uh, channel A, which is the larger signal, which is the input signal. And on the channel B, we are measuring the voltage across the, the capacitor. This is an RC circuit, and we have, uh, we have a, a phase shift between the waveforms. As you can see, the voltage across the capacitor uh, has this phase shift or phase difference. The frequency is the same at the output across the capacitor, but there is a phase difference between two signals, right? So that would be possible to measure that one too, right? So we can measure from this top uh, signal to the, uh, the top of the other signal, right? The peak values or to zero crossing, we can measure. So I have put the blue one on the peak of the uh, smaller waveform and the yellow one on the peak of the larger waveform and we can measure the time difference as you can see here the time difference is uh, 227.2 uh, microsecond and this can be uh, translated to the phase difference right the phase difference between these two signals also can be measured using oscilloscope so in order to summarize that uh, using an oscilloscope, we can measure the amplitude of the signal. Usually for AC waveforms, it is usually uh, beneficial to use oscilloscope for AC waveforms because we want to see the exact waveform on the signal. And uh, there is another thing, we can measure the uh, amplitude of the AC signal. We can use uh, oscilloscope in order to measure the um, frequency of the signal, as I explained before. The, the frequency is measured using the horizontal axis and on the horizontal axis we can only measure time, right? So we measure time and the period and one hour period will give the frequency as I explained before. Uh, and also we can also measure uh, the phase difference between two signals. You can see here we are measuring the peak from here and also peak from the second waveform and the time difference is displayed here, T2 minus T1 which is 227. 
and if we scale this one uh, to the value of the uh, thousand microsecond or one millisecond which is a one period of the signal we will be able to uh, explain that in the um, in degrees right uh, for example say uh, we have uh, 180 degrees uh, is one complete cycle so 227 which is the time difference right divided by a thousand by a 500 I would say 500 is is better choice because 500 is uh, uh, 180 degrees because a half a cycle which is 180 degrees uh, and uh, so we divide 227 by 500 microsecond and then we multiply it by 180 which will give you uh, like 80 degrees phase difference almost 80 degrees phase difference between these two waveforms so uh, well uh, this is a brief explanation of how to measure frequency and phase uh, difference between two AC waveforms using oscilloscope. Uh, one more important point before I uh, finish the video is that you can use a reverse uh, bottom here uh, and you also are able to save the waveform if you click on the save. If you reverse, the background will change to white so it is easier to to display and if you want to have a report and you want to print the waveform so uh, that would be much easier and you will not use a lot of ink. Uh, that's pretty much uh, about the oscilloscope in Multisim. Please visit our website drhsolutions.com drhsolutions.com uh, or if you have any questions uh, we have uh, email info at uh, drhsolutions.com send us an email we have uh, free videos on the website, uh, a lot of online courses, uh, and also we provide tutoring for college courses. Uh, so please visit the website and let us know uh, what you think. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.